Baked on grease is a common issue with all stainless steel cookware and it happens to beginners and professionals alike. So is it harmful? How do you prevent it? And most importantly, how do you get rid of it? In this video, I'm gonna show you two methods. One of them is an all natural method that requires a little bit more elbow grease, but both methods are highly effective at getting rid of baked on grease. Let's dive in. Okay, let's talk about baked on grease with stainless steel. Now in this video, I'm not gonna be talking about thermal stains or rainbow stains. I actually already have a short video where I address that. And rainbow stains or thermal stains are really easy to take care of. You can usually knock them out with some vinegar, water, and the soft side of your sponge. And if you really have crazy gnarly thermal stains, you can actually use Barkeeper's Friend. So it's relatively easy to knock those out. It usually takes a minute or less. So this video is gonna be mainly focusing on baked on grease, baked on grease stains. And in the stainless steel world, it's a very common thing. Now, if you watched some of my previous videos, I've done a detailed video on stainless steel skillets, cleaning stainless steel skillets. It was mainly targeting a sticky mess, you know, errors during cooking where you have stuck on food and it drives you crazy. But I also touched up on rainbow stains. Like I said earlier, I did a short. In that video, I talked about vinegar, baking soda. I talked about Barkeeper's Friend. I went into a lot of details about how to remove a sticky mess. But a lot of you commented that you wanted me to talk about baked on grease, because a lot of you are having a hard time getting rid of it. I touched up on baked on grease in that video, but I didn't go into the details. So in this video, we're gonna dive in a little bit deeper. Okay, so what's baked on grease? How does it happen? How can you avoid it? Well, baked on grease is exactly what it sounds like. Grease is baking on to your stainless steel pan. And the way that you can avoid it is by not neglecting the back and sides where it's most common. Cleaning your stainless steel pans thoroughly usually knocks it out, but we're all guilty of allowing baked on grease to happen on the back and sides of stainless steel pans because they're harder to clean. That's where the majority of the splatter happens. And because we're using the pans day in, day out, we tend to neglect it. Don't feel so bad because baked on grease stains happen in professional kitchens with professional chefs all the time. And if you're like me, where you're constantly using your pan, you don't necessarily care as much, but if you're hanging them, Baked on grease looks disgusting and it's definitely something that is very aesthetic and you wanna take care of. But don't worry, there's a couple of methods in this video that I'm gonna recommend. One of them is the tried and true, our best pal, Barkeeper's Friend, that actually removes baked on grease really easily. And if you're not really into chemicals, then I have a all natural method, my second method, that works pretty well too, but you're gonna to have to put a little bit more elbow grease. So with that being said, let's dive into the two methods I highly recommend. Okay, the first method is Barkeeper's Friend. Barkeeper's Friend does magic. I mean, literally Barkeeper's Friend can handle anything. I highly recommend Barkeeper's Friend, and honestly, the effort level on a flat surface is next to none. With my all-clad pan, which is my workhorse, that thing had baked on grease everywhere, on the back, on the sides, and I used Barkeeper's Friend on the flat side to show you guys just how easy it can remove it. It was one coat, I sprinkled on some Barkeeper's Friend, added some water, followed the manufacturer's directions. After about a minute, I just scrubbed it out with my plastic brush and it took it off no problems with the first try. It was literally just coming right off. Now on the slope sides, Barkeeper's Friend's a little bit harder to get to. It's not impossible, it still will knock it out, but I wanted to leave that area open so I can show you the second method. You just have to add a little bit more elbow grease with Barkeeper's Friend when you're applying it to surfaces that are not flat. I mean, that makes sense, right? So just keep that in mind. But Barkeeper's Friend's effort level, I would say was like a four <laughs> out of 10 for a flat surface. And then for the slope sides, I would say it's probably like a six or seven. So just a little bit more elbow grease. So what are the pros and cons of Barkeeper's Friend? Well, it's readily available, it's really cheap, it's very effective. You can use it on multiple surfaces, not just stainless steel. You can use it around your kitchen, your bathroom tile. Barkeeper's Friend has a lot of purpose and it handles it just fine. It does a great job on thermal stains, rainbow stains, sticky messes, baked on grease. I mean, whatever you think of, Barkeeper's Friend most likely will take care of it for you and take care of it fast, efficiently, and with very little effort from you. 
The cons to Barkeeper's Friend is it's not very good for cast iron or carbon steel. It will strip the seasoning. And it also does react with certain materials. So it's a really good idea to check a spot first, you know, apply it in a certain spot just to make sure it's not going to react with the metal that you're going to use it on. And if all systems are good, then continue on and you should be fine. But, you know, just keep in mind, it is a bit reactive. The other big con to Barkeeper's Friend is it's a chemical. There's a lot of people out there that do not like using chemicals. They prefer to use natural methods. I personally don't mind Barkeeper's Friend. I think it's fine as long as I thoroughly wash it and clean it after you know using it. It's a great tool to have in the kitchen. So that actually brings me to my second option, the all natural method. Okay, for the all natural method, I'm actually gonna recommend a really old one. It's actually cutting up a lime or lemon and using salt and using the lime, the acidity from the lime and that salt to scrub out the pan. Bacon soda usually does a good job of helping the baked on grease kind of loosen up a bit so the lime and the salt can do its job. And some people have even added a bit of vinegar. Now here's what I recommend. If you could soak your pan in baking soda and just like maybe a tablespoon of vinegar for 30 minutes or so, that should help you in loosening up the baked on grease. And then just take it out and cut up half of a lemon, add some salt, kosher salt, something coarse to help you scrub out the stains. That usually does a really good job. The lemon, the acidity of the lemon is aiding in removing the stains, but the salt's acting like a scrubber, like an abrasive. And I think if you are looking for an all natural route with no baking soda, no vinegar, you could still do it with the lemon and the salt. It's just gonna take a lot more time, a lot more elbow grease. It's not impossible, but the effort level is gonna be like an eight or nine out of 10. If you pre-soak it with baking soda and a little bit of vinegar, the effort level drops to about a six or seven. What are the pros and cons? The pros are it's all natural it's all readily available and it's really simple to do the cons you're gonna need more than one lemon and if you want to go all natural then you're gonna have to scrub a lot there's gonna be a lot more elbow grease and unfortunately if you're not willing to use baking soda or vinegar then you're just gonna have a little bit more work now there's one more potential con there's some studies out there that have suggested that with poor quality stainless steel Acidity, lemon, and so forth actually causes leaching of chromium. But with high quality stainless steel, 18.8, 18.10, you know, things like that, surgical grade basically, you're good to go. So it's not necessarily a con, it's a potential con. Just make sure you have high quality stainless steel. If you're buying from a manufacturer that's known, then you should be good to go. But if you're buying an off brand or a really cheap, budget friendly stainless steel pan with the welded disc and the really cheap walls, then you may not want to use the acidic method, especially if you're concerned about being all natural. So that's something to consider. So is baked on grease harmful? Not necessarily. If you're getting baked on grease on the outside of your pan, it's not really harming anything, but it's not good for sanitation. And like I said, for aesthetics, for you know the appearance of your pans, it's not very good. It can be embarrassing. It kind of suggests that you don't clean your pan very often. But if you don't necessarily care, it won't hurt anything. Now there is a caveat. If you're getting thick baked on grease and you're noticing it's melting off, it's not necessarily baked on anymore. Now you just have grease that's on layers upon layers and that can cause a fire. But that's very rare because if you are washing your stainless steel pan, it should be okay. You should never get to that point. It's just you're not scrubbing hard enough to get on that baked on material that's happening in the back. As the grease is splattering, as your stainless steel pan's being used and you know getting heated up, that grease is literally just baking into the pan. So which method would I choose? Barkeeper's Friend, hands down, is the easier method. I use it all the time. You can see in my video, I had a lot of baked on grease. Barkeeper's Friend took care of it 90% of the time. The lemon method, the all natural method, did a pretty good job too, but I ended up just finishing my pan with Barkeeper's Friend. It required very little effort. It's very effective. I hope these two methods helped you and gave you some options with your baked on grease. Well, that's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative. Check out some of my other videos and I will catch you on the next one. Take care, everybody.